Hey y'all, it's me again. Okay, I've sent my canner off of the stove so that it would cool down. It's been cooling for about 30 minutes now. Turn that noise maker off. It's been cooling for about 30 minutes. And I know you can't see it from here, but the gauge shows zero. See that little thing right there? It's not sitting down yet, which means there still is some pressure in here from just the heat of the canning. And it probably, the steam will hurt you if you open it right now. So wait until this is down to zero, which it is. And this little gauge, this little pop-up thing is down by itself. Oh, that's the TV. Did you see it? It just did it. All by itself. Okay, that means it's cool enough. The next thing you want to do is this little gadget right here, your little weight. You want to take it off and put it somewhere where you'll remember where it is and you don't have to hunt it every time. Just, just so you know. Your canner is now, you can put your hand right here and there's no steam. But when you open it, you want to open it away from you. Not to you. Move all this stuff out of the way. Okay. Turn your lid. See how it just turned ever so easy? If you have to force it, stop! It ain't ready to open, but you're going to lift it and tilt it away from you. Did you see all that steam come out? You don't want that coming in your face. If you tilt it towards you, it's going to come in your face. And we have some, they smell amazing. I know you can't see it, but they smell amazing. And we're going to lift straight up and set it right there. Um, I think I'm going to let them sit here just a little bit longer because I just lost some juice out of here. I saw it come out. So I'm going to let these jars sit here just a little bit longer before I take them out. But this is what they look like. Let me move my beef juice out of the way. Ta-ta, babe. Have a good day at work. I don't know if you can still see it from there, but it's still cooking. There's still, this this jar is extremely, extremely hot. It's still cooking. And I normally let this thing sit here a whole lot longer than what I just did. But I wanted to show you the things to check before you opened your canner. Um, they say to open it and let it sit for 30 minutes before you move your jars. That's probably a smart thing. I'm not going to argue with it. It's probably a smart thing. Uh, But don't try to do this without a jar lifter. I tried to do it two things at one time and it's just not working. Can y'all see the, the it bubbling? Did you hear it? One of them snapped down. That's not a smart thing. Don't ding the jar. Okay. So that's what they look like. And that is approximately eight pounds of potatoes. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six quart jars out of approximately eight pounds of potatoes. Um, what do I use these for, you might ask? These will sit on my shelf, and they're perfectly cooked. Nothing wrong with them. They're, they're delicious potatoes. Um, the next video I'm working on right now is with the beef, the canned beef. You can come in in the evening, take one of these jars of potatoes,
pour it out in a colander in the sink and rinse the starch off because it is going to have some starch on it when you take it out. Um, it doesn't affect the flavor, doesn't affect anything. Put some onions and bell pepper and celery and garlic in a skillet with some butter or olive oil. Either one. I like either one. Sometimes I use both. And saute that until it's soft. Then pour those strained potatoes over in there. Put a lid on it and let it cook for about five minutes. Stir it up. Add your seasonings, whatever seasonings you want with it. You have a pot of potatoes and onions and I mean it's just unreal how good it is. Normally you would have to cook potatoes and onions and everything like that in a skillet for 15-20 minutes, 25 minutes to get that and who has that kind of time these days? Ain't none of us got that kind of time. So I'm gonna let these cool just a little bit more before I move them into the other room and then i uh, Here's another subject. A lot of people say don't write on the top of the lids. I write on the top of the lids with a magic marker so that I know that lid has been used. And I won't accidentally use it again somehow. Because it won't seal a second time. But uh, there is one other thing you need to know. When these are completely cool, and when I say completely cool, you can pick this jar up and move it, and it's not hot. I debated about this for a long time, because I was around my grandmother canning all my life, and she never took the rings off. So, all the new books and everything say take the rings off. So, I went and researched. Did you hear it? I went, that is music to your ears, that little snap, that means that lid has sucked down. But I did some research on it, and the logic behind taking the ring off is, I'm not going to argue with it, and most of mine on my shelf do have the rings removed. If for some reason this, say this jar of potatoes didn't seal good, or it was a failure. And let me just tell you this, you're going to have canning failures. You can do everything right every time, same thing, every time, and you're going to have a jar for whatever the reason doesn't seal. But say that jar escaped your seeing that it didn't seal, and you've got it lined up in your shelves, and it's going to sit there. If it's, it's, it's like my house, if it lasts six months, I'm doing good. But it's going to sit there. If it didn't seal well, that means there's air getting in it. That means air got in it. If it didn't seal well, it's going to spoil. And those um, spores are going to grow and they're going to multiply. And the stuff inside this jar is going to expand. Love that sound. I don't know if y'all can hear it. But if you've taken the ring off and it's going bad the whole time sitting on your shelf, it's going bad. If you've taken this ring off, it will pop that lid off before it bursts your jar. But if this lid is still on it and it goes bad, you're going to come in one day to a mighty mess because it's going to pop your jar. Whereas if it was just pop the lid, you're going to come home one day and you're going to go, oh my God, what is that smell? And you're going to find one of your jars is yucky. Oh, uh, but... I just want y'all to be safe and secure with canning something. Everybody needs to buy that ball book of canning. It tells you everything you want to know in it. There are some wonderful people online that can everything. Uh, I'm fixing to show you how to pack 
and can meet. But these potatoes, and I know a lot of people don't like canned potatoes because it, it does take the texture changes. But let me tell you, I've spent today, and I've done more than just potatoes today, I've spent one Sunday, and when I'm finished on my shelf, I will have about 12 meals that one day when I'm running late and don't have a whole lot of time, I can come in and put something to cooking. Um, just a disclaimer for you. I don't claim to have any type of degree. It, I don't claim to have any type of degree in canning. Um, I gleaned from my grandmother, from the ball book. I've taken some canning classes. Uh, and one thing you have to know, everybody is going to have their own little twist in the way they do things. Some people are not going to want to put salt in theirs at all. Other people will put salt in it. Some people may put a teaspoon of onion powder in it. Some people might can it with chicken broth. Now, mind you, if you use chicken broth when you can your potatoes, you have to do it for 75 minutes and not 40. Because anything that is a meat product has to be canned like there was meat in it. Remember that. Um, if you'll get that ball book, it gives you the time to can anything. Now, it will tell you the United States government says... We cannot can fish in home kitchens. I beg to differ with you. Uh, you cannot can freshwater fish. But any fatty, did you hear it? Any fatty fish, saltwater fish, red fish, we get redfish down here, snapper, any of those can beautifully. You take and you use the wide mouth jars like this, but you use the little pint size. You fillet that fish about half inch thick, and then you roll it as tight as you can and put it in a jar. Put a half a teaspoon of salt. If you want a little deal in it, you can put a little deal in it. I'm not a deal on my fish type person, but uh, put your lid on it, can it for 75 minutes, you don't add any liquid to it at all, can it for 75 minutes, you now have shelf stable fish to make tuna fish with, if you ever get the chance to eat some home canned red fish or snapper, and make tuna fish with it or tuna croquettes, you know those little things you roll in breadcrumbs and fry them. You will never buy another can of professionally canned meat again. Because it, it's the texture is good, the flavor is completely different. Um, but that's how I can potatoes. Green beans, corn, peas. Any of that's done exactly the same way. It's done exactly the same way. It's packed down in jars, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. If you want the salt, put your lid on it, pressure it. Um, I don't remember right off the top of my head the time for pints. Quartz is 40 minutes on 10 pounds of pressure if you're at our sea level. You can can any of them like that. I'm going to do another video on how to can pork and beans. If you've ever eaten my homemade pork and beans, you'll never buy that stuff on the shelf again. And ranch style beans. Let me ask you this. Go to the store and price because there's a there's a lady on Facebook that have uh, on YouTube has quite a snarky video to all of us home canners. She said, you're not saving money. I beg to differ with you. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six quart jars. Now, mind you, I had the lids here and I had the jars, so I didn't have to buy that. But one case of this size jars is about $12. So it's not ridiculously expensive. I paid $4 for the potatoes. That's all my cost. After you get it going a little bit, you really do save money because I didn't have to go buy jars. Now the lids, you do have to buy. I, I haven't tried those Tackler lids that you can reuse, so I don't know anything about those. But a little small can of potatoes that would be the equivalent of 15 ounces, which is half of this, you're going to pay at least a dollar for. I've got six jars of potatoes that I paid four dollars for the potatoes. So I'm not a mathematician, y'all know. I don't do math. But I got twice as many. So I, in essence, have 12 pints of potatoes. And I didn't spend nowhere near a dollar a pint. And I know what's in these. I peeled these potatoes in my sink. I washed them in my sink. I personally cut them up. I personally put them in my jars and canned them. So I know exactly what's in these jars of potatoes. Now, to me, that's worth more than anything. How many times have you opened up a can of something and there was a bug in it? And it's going to happen. They're canning millions of cans of stuff a day. There's stuff going to fall in there. That's why you have those recalls. I don't have to worry about the United States government issuing a recall on my potatoes. Because I know where they come from. And I know how I canned them. Now, if you're one of these people that likes buying stuff at the store, I am no shame for me at all. But if you do want to know how to do more for yourself, I'll gladly share any knowledge I have. But y'all have a great day. I'm fixing to, these have cooled enough I can move them. I'm going to move these to the dining room. And then I'm fixing a can up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I've got eight pints of meat. I think. Hopefully.